What is the blue granite recognition? Where did it come from? You'll find out coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Fox 43 studio in Florence. We're focused again on the life of the Honorable Phil Levenis. Thank you, Phil, for coming back in. Back to back days to think about it. In this the studio, a little warm in here today. It's been a, a heck of a morning. A heck of a morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for getting back in. It was so exciting yesterday to hear about your now 23 years in the South Carolina Senate serving the Sumter and Lee counties, to hear about all your activities as a recently retired Brigadier General in the South Carolina Air National Guard, to think about, was that 30 years? 30 years of military service, yeah. Incredible. Incredible. And of course, your life, uh, you and EZ, and your four children. I, we didn't focus enough on uh, your four children yesterday, and I know we talked a little bit about where, where they all are. You said one's in law school now. Well, one just finished law school at Washington, and Lee, he's studying for the bar exam. I've never seen him study so hard. Uh, he finished college at Charleston. Got one in Greece. Uh, he, he loves to travel, and he does a lot. He's very low maintenance. Uh, I've got one who's a Secret Service agent uh, in the Northeast uh, and has been commissioned Secret Service agent since uh, 2000. Mm. And then our daughter, Christina, just finished uh, Clemson University with honors mm -hmm. and hopes possibly to go to law school. She's studying now for the LSAT and wants to work at a law firm for a year mm -hmm. to see if that's really what she wants to do. So two thinking the, uh, the the legal side, possibly, one in Secret Service and one in Greece. What about the aspect of a son in the Secret Service? Well, what, what's that like? Well, we're very proud of him. Uh, he has been uh, with the service for over three years now. Uh, frightening, I guess you'd say. I don't know how to explain it uh, completely, but he was at the World Trade Center when it was hit. Mm -hmm. uh, we found out pretty early that he was okay, but the rest of the day was fairly harrowing, and it was... Uh, difficult experience for him, for his mother and I, for our whole family. Uh, we burned up the telephones that day mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, visited him soon thereafter. It was, it was a difficult time for all of us, but that personal connection uh, led me to understand just how difficult it must have been for those families that didn't get good news, because it was, it was real hard for us, and we did get good news. And, but this, and, and, that, and that is that is tragic to think about the aspect of the families going through. Um, and I'm sure that fortunately there were a lot of folks who got good news at the end of the day. How about the, uh, the aspect of a child now thinking about law school and one that now wrapping up law school and going to the legal profession? Was there some grounds for that? It, had some other family members been in, in the law? Was there some inspiration in that regard? I, I'm not <laughs> sure if it, it hadn't been my public involvement. We have. A lot of family who are attorneys. At one time, we had five first cousins practicing law in one building in Columbia. Mm -hmm. I have a first cousin on my mother's side who is a member of our state Supreme Court. I have numerous cousins on my father's side uh, who are uh, attorneys. And I'm, I'm proud of uh, what they have done. My son uh, hopes to practice in Charleston, uh, working with the solicitor's office. It's, uh, you know, it's fun to watch them grow and... and uh, to really enlist their help now that they uh, have experiences too uh, mm -hmm. that, that helped me a lot in, in my thinking and decision making. Very definitely. Central, Dixie Central Distributing Company, Dixie Beverage uh, Company earlier. How long has that been in service? My father started Dixie Beverage in 1948. Uh, he came back after the war, as I explained uh, yesterday. He lost a leg in the service. His father told him that he couldn't work in the family produce business because he wasn't able to carry the produce around and everyone had to. So he started working in, uh, in the soft drinks and beer and uh, started that business uh, in Columbia. In 1959, he opened a business in Sumter. And in 1974, uh, I came back from the Air Force and joined him in that business. Mm -hmm. And it originally served so Columbia and Sumter, two large areas. Right. He sold the Columbia market in 1972. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so... Sumter was a great choice for me and has really kind of shaped our lives. Mm -hmm. My wife and I have just enjoyed Sumter. I doubt if I could get her away from that. I'm sure you couldn't. I'm sure you couldn't. You talked about yesterday, I think it was age 12, you started working indirectly for your dad as a youngster. Oh, it, the aspect of that, Bill, it, 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 that inspiration in early age, age 12, uh, pretty dang young to get started. 
Well, that was 1958. Uh, I think it was a very uh, common thing to do then, to start early, a uh, part-time job and, and to work. But it, it was good for me. It certainly was a family tradition of working in those businesses and, and learning what we could. Um, and then I worked at my father's company in Columbia as I was in college, but also uh, took my paycheck right out of the airport and learned to fly then. And uh, So it, it was just a natural what, what about some of the lessons you learned at an early age with the, working in the family business, Bill? Well, certainly it was uh, hard work, uh, honesty, uh, to treat people right, the people you work with, uh, to treat them right and, and ask the same in, in response. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a tragic part of, of being an employer is that sometimes you have to terminate employment. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not embarrassed that I probably have waited much too long before I've ever done that. Uh, and never done that prematurely because what a person does for a living is very important to them. And you need to be very certain before you terminate that relationship that there is no alternative. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it, those are the kind of lessons that, we, that I've learned and tried to carry forward. Mm -hmm. So when did you become an active part of the management? 1974 when I came back from the Air Force. Mm -hmm. uh, was stationed in Texas, uh, separated the Air Force, went into the Air National Guard as we discussed before. Uh, and went straight into family business. A small business, by the way. We only had 10 employees. Mm -hmm. and, and, and did your family always have the feeling that Phil would come home someday, he'd take over the family business, or he'd get real active? I don't think we talked about it. Did you have brothers and sisters? Or? I had an older brother and a younger brother. My right. older brother had passed away in 71. And uh, I suppose I thought I was coming back, but I'm not sure my father did. And so he was kind of surprised and very delighted uh, when I did uh, come back. And, and I'm... I have always been thrilled that I was able to do that. He lived in Columbia. I lived in Sumter. That makes father and son working a little easier than it might otherwise be, and uh, and we had a good relationship. Certainly, he uh, his experience in the service and in business and in civic activity has always been my inspiration. Mm -hmm. how, did, how did the expansion feel when, when you all merged with, uh, with another uh, local distributor between Dixie Central Distributing Company? Has business expanded? The business has been uh, satisfactory. The mar the, uh, certainly the economy has been bad. We merged in, in 2001, but uh, we're doing well. My business partner now, uh, Robert Wilder, was my business competitor for many, many years, and I always had a high regard for him. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was easy for us to join forces. You've seen in banks and in uh, supermarkets and in so many other institutions uh, combining over the last few years. And uh, we thought it made sense. It did make sense. And we've been able to move forward in our structure. And when the economy gets better, we'll be there and uh, we'll be uh, in a very good position as one of only two distributors uh, in the Sumter area now. Great. That's exciting. So your, your, your grandfather, who immigrated here from Greece, had begun a family partnership called LPT. Is this still in existence? And what type of business is this? Certainly it is. My grandfather came from Greece and he and his cousins uh, bought back in 1918 a piece of property that reminded them of the old country in Gastonia, North Carolina. Mm. That has expanded uh, over the years under the management of uh, one member from each family who were the primary partner uh, into a uh, real estate holding of several millions of dollars. And no one family member owns any more than uh, four or five percent, but it's kind of kept the family together. Uh, our cousins and uh, extended family meet on occasion, and uh, we manage several properties in North Carolina, South Carolina, and used to be in Georgia. And that, you know, that's worked out very, very well. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that has uh, kind of kept our family together, which is great. That is very definitely, and, and that's throughout the Carolinas. I mean, that's truly a large area. Well, but it's a small company. Mm -hmm. uh, we only have several different properties, but as I say, we have to meet regularly to try to help manage them. They, doesn't require daily management. It certainly requires management on a weekly and a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. well, you've been active in local finance and it, it served as a board member and chairman of the, is it Bank of Sumter? It's uh, Sumter National Bank. Uh, Sumter National Bank is one of a banks of a holding company from uh, out of Orangeburg. We have Orangeburg National, Sumter National, Florence National, mm -hmm. and uh, the Bank of Ridgeway. And we also have a, a uh, mortgage company. And that has been delightful. I was... Uh, about to turn 50 when a friend of mine, uh, Hugo Sims, came by and said, I, I didn't know him at the time, but he's become a good friend. And, 
uh, said, uh, would you be interested in serving uh, and helping start a bank? And I said, that is fascinating. That's something that I've always wanted to know more about. Mm -hmm. So I've been the chairman of the board of Sumter National since its inception. Now we're about eight years old, mm -hmm. have $110 million in assets, and mm -hmm. uh, very profitable. And we've, it's been fascinating to learn about banking. How about, in, how about in the summertime, Phil? I know we're jumping from issue to issue, but obviously we really want to get to the blue grant recognition. But I think about aspects for what do you do during the summer when legislature's not in session as, as a state center? I mean, that's what, what I didn't get done in the springtime is what I do during the summer. Uh, I've been trying to, to get together some issues for my mother uh, and, uh, and uh, the rest of my family for the last several months. And it'll take the next several months to get it done. And uh, then, of course, I need to work at uh, my business where I go every day. Even during the legislative session, uh, I'll be there most every day. Mm -hmm. When you think about, obviously, so many ventures you're involved in, civic and political commitments, do you find time to relax a little with EV? Well, certainly we enjoy travel and we enjoy uh, family. Every uh, Thanksgiving, we get together with uh, all the uh, cousins and extended family on my father's side of the family, his four brothers and sisters. and all of their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Mm -hmm. That's delightful. We've visited our son in New York, uh, uh, and we visited our son in San Francisco. And so we, we just uh, have had uh, an enjoyable time traveling, and uh, Evie's very involved in civic matters in Sumter. She's on the partnership board for USC Sumter. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that takes up a lot of our time. Mm -hmm. I never find time when I don't have anything to do. I'm sure you don't, and I know yesterday we talked so much about your love of flying, and if someone was to ask you if Phil Venice had a favorite sport or a favorite hobby, would flying be one of those any time of the year? Well, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, flying would be the favorite hobby. Flying would also be the favorite sport. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, is flying powered airplanes is what you might call a pastime or a hobby. You start the engine, you go. Mm -hmm. For a number of years, I owned a glider, and we flew mainly out of uh, the Manning Airport. Uh, and uh, that is a sport because you're only going to stay up as long as the current conditions will allow and uh, as well as you can do with them. So both a sport and a hobby is flying for me. Mm -hmm. So do you get down to the coast often? Fairly often. We have uh, a vacation home that we share with my mother and my brother and his wife uh, at, uh, in Charleston. And uh, I'm fascinated by the South Carolina coast. It's growth and it's management uh, because uh, state leaders now have to uh, really do some broad and creative thinking to be sure that the coast that people enjoy, millions of people enjoy now in South Carolina, will have the same quality 10, 20, 40 years from now that it does today. And that's going to take some creative work and thinking. When we think about the impact that the, that the coast has on the state's uh, economy, and we think about the impact, for instance, of the Grand Strand, the Horry County, Georgetown County area, the impact it has, how does that affect the state legislature's decisions with respect to supporting the, the strands needs, uh, road improvement, school well, start I, dates? Yes, I think that we were terribly uh, remiss in the legislature in funding the Carolina-based parkways. We should have done that in 1990. I only got around to it in the middle 90s, and it's coming true now. But certainly our residents and our guests along the Grand Strand are extremely critical uh, and I think that uh, we need to keep that in mind uh, as we plan uh, things in South Carolina. Uh, and, and we need to be sensitive to that. We haven't been sensitive enough, but I think we're gaining a sensitivity as people in the Midlands and the upstate realize that a key to our success is not only our residents in uh, the Grand Strand area, but our visitors to the Grand Strand and the Charleston and the uh, Hilton Head area. Definitely, definitely, and throughout the state. But I, I only ask because that's in our viewing area. Let's talk now. The big focus, blue granite recognition. How did it get started, Phil? Well, uh, it really goes back quite a way. Uh, some of uh, the folks may remember that William Proxmire, the U.S. Senator from Wisconsin, many years ago had what he called the Golden Fleece Award. Mm -hmm. He recognized uh, excess and waste in the federal government and uh, bad performance in the federal government. The blue granite recognition is the total reverse of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I initiated the Blue Granite Recognition to recognize extraordinary results that state employees provide for uh, people in South Carolina and our guests here. Now, by that I mean that there are 60,000 plus state employees, and there's a lot of them that work very, very hard, most all of them. So there's a numerous uh, state employees that should be 
employees of the month and employees of the year because of what they put into their job. The Blue Planet recognition actually goes deeper than that and says, we want to recognize those people who provide extraordinary results as, as uh, related to their job. We call it the Blue Granite because Blue Granite is our state stone. And uh, I believe state employees are the bedrock of the quality of life of people here in South Carolina. We call it a recognition because it's not the result of a contest or a well-outlined uh, set of rules. It is simply recognizing what a lot of state employees do every day just because that's who they are, they're state employees. We were fortunate to have the South Carolina State Credit Union underwrite it. There was no state money involved. Mm. And we have a website, which I'd invite people to go to, which explains a lot more. It's www.bluegranitrecognition, one word, bluegranitrecognition.org. Mm. What you'll find there is that uh, this was started in the springtime. I started it. I've invited others to be part of it, and they're joining me now. And uh, we have, uh, through that website, got nominations, and we've made three recognitions. We'll make another here in July. And we've got some wonderful, wonderful nominations. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'll uh, tell you that uh, it's really been a pleasure to, to uh, be involved. For each person who's recognized, we give them a piece of blue granite stone about this big. Mm -hmm. has the state carved in it, their name, and it says the Blue Granite Recognition for Extraordinary Service to the People of South Carolina. Got the State Credit Union logo, and I have signed it. And uh, we give this to, to folks. And my wife says it's too heavy. I say they're not going to carry it around. Uh, they're going to put it someplace and display it proudly, and, and that's what we want them to do. Some of the criteria that, that, uh, that we go by, because there are no fixed rules, uh, I look for... Uh, insight, professional insight. I look for initiative. Uh, we look for persistence that has provided extraordinary outcomes. Uh, I'm interested in whether or not other agencies and other states want to come and see what these folks have done. Mm -hmm. And if they do, uh, this tells me that there's an extraordinary outcome here that, that value, is valued by other people, other professionals in the field. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you about our first recognition, and that'll give you kind of a feel of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We recognize the people in the transmission department of the South Carolina Educational Television. Mm -hmm. Now, this is for state employees only, and I know there are others that, that do wonderful jobs across the state. The people in the transmission department realize there's no state money, because we budget cuts, for replacing our old analog transmitters with digital transmitters. Mm -hmm. And these transmitters average 24 years old. Some of them are over 30 years old. So their insight told them that other states were converting to digital and there were some analog transmitters available. Our folks went to Kentucky and bought all of their equipment for $2,500. They took their own personal time, got a, got a uh, flatbed truck, picked up that equipment, brought it back. Thus far, they have used $200,000 worth of parts that might not otherwise have been available. Mm. And so that's an extraordinary outcome for the people of South Carolina. They've re-engineered the transmitters to uh, save energy and have saved another $150,000 over the last 18 months in all of the transmitters across South Carolina. And again, that's an extraordinary outcome for the people of South Carolina. And they didn't do it for this recognition because it didn't exist at that right. time. Right. They did it because they knew it would help people of South Carolina. And, and that's, that's, you know, that's just wonderful. That was helping all four million of us kind of on a macro scale. Our second recognition went to vocational rehab, the uh, human engineering people. Mm -hmm. There are three, uh, I don't know that's the proper term, bioengineers at vocational rehab. They take clients and they look at them and they ask a different question than they used to. People used to come to voc rehab and let's suppose they had lost the use of an arm. The traditional question was, this is what one-armed people do. What would you like? What of this would you like to do? You change that question. Now they say, you don't have the use of an arm. What would you like to do? And then they help them do it. In one case, and in many cases, they, they do this uh, at a low cost to the state. In one case, they had a lady who was a, a librarian. 
She lost the use of an arm, and it made it difficult for her to handle books. They got a, a flat plate. They put a metal flange on one side that was thick and had a little lip up. On the other side, they put a metal flange opposing it with a little lip. They were spring-loaded. Mm-hmm. And they, then she can slip with one hand. She can slip the book in. She can write on the back. She can tape things to it, take the book out, and she can operate. And she can do what she wants to do. And instead of being a burden on her family and possibly on the state, she's now supporting her family and contributing to the mm-hmm. state. Mm-hmm. And all this costs less than 200 bucks. How many things they do cost a lot. But that's an extraordinary outcome for this lady, and it's on a micro scale. It's for an individual. Mm-hmm. It's the kind of thing that we do, we have state employees do every day. One other story quickly. Yeah. There's a young lady who uh, is uh, very, very uh, athletic from her waist up, but from her waist down, her body is very, very small and not very powerful. And um, she wanted to be in retail and... and uh, check folks out at, uh, at grocery stores, that's what she knew she could do. They built her a little platform, and now she can work instead of being out of work. And she told me when we went and gave the recognition, she said, you know, I was a client at Alabama Voc Rehab, and they never were able to help me. And these folks, these bioengineers, the three mm-hmm. of them, looked at her, looked at what she wanted to do, and made it possible. Mm. So for that, they received uh, the Blue Granite recognition and I feel real, real good about it. By talking about extraordinary outcomes, it gives me a chance to talk about uh, the ordinary things state employees do every day that are very important for all of us. And every Christmas Day, somebody's got to be a prison guard. Mm-hmm. Every 4th of July, a wildlife conservation officer has to be out there on patrol. Mm-hmm. And we have people at DOT who stand next to uh, cars going 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, they stand 10, 20 feet away as they build or repair the roads that we all need. And and that's why I say state employees are the bedrock of our quality of life. It was so exciting this morning, Phil, preparing for the interview and thinking, and and I saw a letter, I guess, announcing the uh, Blue Granite recognition and thinking through, and I think it was the conservation person, just laying out the aspect of being on the river, being out, making sure that we're safe. Right. That uh, participants up and down, of course, the South Carolina State Parks, Parks, Recreation, Tourism, all the aspects of folks that interrelate with one of the state's largest economic engines, the tourism industry. We think about that aspect, and it's truly amazing. It is, and, and uh, I value the state employee. Uh, they uh, recognize that uh, their career is service to the people of South Carolina. I want all the people in the state to recognize that. Unfortunately, recently with budget cuts and tax reduction, some people have equated that to maybe we're not getting much uh, for our dollars for state employees. Nothing could be further from the truth. We have wonderful state employees that work hard and do some uh, pretty extraordinary things. Mm, absolutely. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible. When you think about that, the 25-pound piece of blue granite, and if, that symbolizes so much. Blue granite is the state zone? That's correct. And, and let me tell you briefly about our most recent recognition because it's so uh, pertinent to, uh, to the coast and to the Horry County area and Florence. We recognize the Department of Transportation and its director, Betty Mabers, for what they call the 27 in 7 program. Mm-hmm. Because Mabry came up with the idea, an innovative funding plan by bonding our state uh, flow of money for state roads. Mm-hmm. And uh, she and the people of DOT have, will have in about two years, built 27 years worth of highway improvements, bridge improvements in seven years. Instead of employing more people as state employees, they contracted with 500 folks to manage these projects. And so many people in the state today are riding on safer and better roads that may previously have been scheduled for the year 2015 or 2020. You won't know which, Mm -hmm. but the point is, is again, that's an extraordinary outcome for the people of South Carolina, again, on a macro scale, mm-hmm. and uh, where the Voc Rehab was on a micro scale. Mm-hmm. So we've only got a couple of minutes. I want to make sure if, if, a, if a viewer wanted to learn more about blue granite recognition and they didn't have use of the Internet currently, would there be a, could they call your office in Columbia or could they call you in Sumter? Certainly they can, and uh, my, my number in Columbia is uh, 
803-212-6000. We'd love to have them call, uh, and we can send them some information. We've garnered a numerous suggestions uh, for recognitions. We give one each month, and as I say, it's no state money involved. It's underwritten by uh, state credit union, uh, and, and so uh, we intend to keep going for this entire year, and there's no shortage of great, great nominations. Has it been received pretty well by fellow legislators? Yes, uh, Senator Leatherman, uh, chairman of our finance committee, made some wonderful comments about the Department of Transportation and the 27 and 7 program, uh, along with many, many others. Uh, Rick Quinn, who is a minority, majority leader in the House, uh, joined me as I was out at Vogue Rehab to make that presentation. Um, I want our legislators to join in on this and learn, as I am, more about what state employees do every day. Mm. Speaking of extraordinary outcomes, Phil, for the last two days we've heard about so many aspects of your life and so many folks who've had a big influence on your life, your wife, your father, your grandparents. There have been so many inspirations in your life. When you try to encapsulate the whole thing, and now state employees and helping to recognize that as well as your, your service to the state, when you think about your 50-plus years, on the planet, is there anyone that, that sticks out as, as, as an inspiration for your life? Certainly my father stands out as an inspiration, but uh, my wife and I realize uh, that we have been blessed in an extraordinary way to have families that support, have people that are considerate and interested in our state, and uh, we're just part of a, a broad team in South Carolina that's done very, very well, and, uh, and we're thankful each and every day for those blessings and for that family inspired by his wife and father and so many others and recognized 60,000 state employees in South Carolina, inspired by so many. Senator Phil LeVinis, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you, Greg. Stay tuned to more Carolina People coming up next. We want to thank Senator Phil Levinas for helping us recognize the extraordinary results that so many state employees help provide. 